So in this video, we're gonna talk about thinking like a camera. What does that mean? Well, what your eyes see is different than what you think they see. And that's different than what the camera lens sees. So try this, if you will. All right, so if you take a look outside your window, look at a tree, what do you see? You see this big green thing, like what's behind me, with some branches, right? But if you look closer, you see the individual leaves. You notice the veins, you notice the colors. And if you look even closer, you'll see the variation in color and you'll see the light and the shadow and the veins. The best camera operators are always looking for that detail in all four corners of their frame every time they start filming. So to up your camera skills, start looking all four corners. Look for reflections in windows. Look at the colors, look at the shapes, look what's coming out behind somebody's head. Pay attention to who's gonna walk in your shot. Sometimes you should wait 30 seconds, let them go by. You don't have to control everything, but you should be aware of what's going to end up in your video. Often, waiting an extra 30 seconds for a barking dog, you'll end up with a better video. Read that as no distraction. If it's a dog piece, then the more barking dogs, the better, right? Add them in later, just like NPR does on the radio. You still get the same effect. I spent decades setting the stage all around the world, and I've had the luxury of a budget and a crew you, however, don't need to go that extreme, but I strongly suggest that you do have the best possible image in the frame. Look around. You know, in still photography, photographers are always looking at, you know, the height of the lens, perspective, what's in focus, the rule of thirds, the composition, color, all this stuff. Video is the same thing. The biggest difference in video is you're recording audio and you're recording camera movement. So, get the shots that you need to tell the story using those elements, and that's what separates video from camera, but looking in all four corners, still the same. So one of my pet peeves is the unsteady shot. If you really want it shot steady, get a tripod, get a gimbal, walk holding the camera the same height, etc. Just pay attention to the camera movement so you don't get people all sick like they're on a boat. So let me talk about uh, a little sequence here that we've all grown up with that you're all aware of, and this little sequence is just a very simple thing but we all know it inherently we just don't usually do it in our shots so it goes something like this so you start with the wide shot then you get to the medium shot then you get to your close-up shot then you do the reverse shot those that sequence those four things are all you need you've seen it a thousand times in TV and in the movies and here's a ex simple example to follow along with and this is how the camera thinks and how you think about storytelling. So close your eyes if you want to and imagine the scene and let's agree that the impact of composing a scene with the reveal will be much better and have a greater impact than just a standard here point and shoot kind of shot. So be the camera. Here's a simple scene. You're walking down the hallway and open the door to find. That's it. That's the whole scene. So you show an establishing shot of you in the hallway. You cut to a shot of the door. You match the same shot as a reverse from the door POV of you walking towards it. Cut to your feet walking across the floor. Cut to a medium shot of the door POV again with a different focal length matching the first shot, only it's closer. Cut to your hand grabbing the doorknob. Cut to the doorknob from the inside and see it turning. Cut to the medium shot of the door opening again inside and your surprised face. Now you cut to a POV of you looking back in the room of the wide shot with the room completely destroyed. You cut back to a low angle of the dog looking up at you, and then you cut to the wide shot of you looking back down at the dog. That sets the whole scene of you walking down the hall only to see the dog has destroyed your whole house. Simple and easy, right? While that sequence may seem like a lot, it's really not that much harder to shoot than just walking down the hallway. It just takes an extra couple of minutes. But the impact of that story, of what the camera sees to tell that story, is so much greater. And that's how you want to think like a camera. You want to use shot selection. You want to use foreground elements. You want to use out of focus backgrounds. You want to use camera mo movement with a purpose. See, if you watch a chase scene on a movie, if you notice most of the time they're always moving left to right, left to right, left to right. That's how the story continues for the chase. It's all psychology, and these subtle ways are ways you can improve your video over the competition. Good photographers take more than snapshots, they capture moments. And when you refine your video capabilities and your abilities to capture interesting scenes and not just shoot from the hip and not just off the cuff kind of stuff, 
I guarantee you your videos will be better when you start thinking like a camera. Your storytelling will improve and your audience will remember it more because now they've got more than just a pretty waterfall. They've got the trip to the waterfall. They've got what happened at the waterfall. They've got getting back in the car being soaking wet. Those are the little elements that tell the story and all along the way your camera has picked out the four corners necessary to tell that story. So think like a camera, think like a storyteller, pay attention to what the lens sees because all this stuff behind you all matters to the viewer. So start thinking like a camera, get those stories out there.